Hi Year 6 and welcome to Monday's Geography lesson. Today we are going to look at natural disasters. So last week we were looking at volcanoes and a volcanic eruption is something that can cause a lot of damage and happens naturally so it can be classed as a natural disaster. Pause the video and see how many other natural disasters you can think of. Okay, so you might have thought of um, floods, tsunamis, earthquakes, um, we've talked about forest fires before, um, avalanches, anything that happens because of nature, so because of weather or because of the land. Uh, we know with volcanoes it's tectonic plates and it's the same with earthquakes. Today I'm going to talk you through a few different natural disasters, what they are and how you should um, deal with them if you were ever to encounter them, although luckily we don't usually encounter them here. And then I'm going to set you off on your independent task for the day. So let's first take a look at earthquakes. So as so this is to do with tectonic plates again, okay? And we've got an image here. So as our plates keep moving in different directions, it builds up some friction. And eventually the energy is released to create a shock wave, an earthquake, okay? The edges of the plates, if you look at this image here, it shows the plates and the edges, the lines are called faults, okay, fault lines. And the fault lines can rub together like that, push towards each other like that or pull away from each other. And we know that the movement of the plates forms mountains and volcanoes. We've looked at that in the last few weeks. Now, when plates push under each other or past each other, that pressure can build up and that friction and that pressure can create a shock, a shock wave where the two plates meet, okay? So where the earthquake happens is along that fault line, okay? Now, there are actually thousands of earthquakes happening every day. Now, sometimes earthquakes are so small that actually you don't feel them. You wouldn't be able to feel them. They cause no damage and only um, special equipment would be able to detect that it's happened. But others can be so big that everyone would feel them and it would destroy towns and cities. OK, thankfully, we don't really get earthquakes like that um, here, although um, we have some people have felt them, most people don't feel them. We do sometimes have small ones. Where a lot of the world's earthquakes happen is in this place, the Ring of Fire. Now you will remember from last week that this is also where most of the world's volcanic eruptions happen. And it's where lots of the tectonic plates meet. Now remember, it's between, you've got Australia here and America here, and this is the Pacific Ocean. And this is the so-called Ring of Fire. So it's where lots of volcanoes erupt and where lots of earthquakes happen. Now in the places around this ring of fire, those people are going to be geared up and ready for earthquakes. So for example, a country like Japan, which is in that, um, in that ring of fire area, people are prepared. So there are things like earthquake resistant buildings um, and they will sway rather than fall down. And there are kits that people can get ready and the people there will know how to respond in an earthquake. This picture here shows the tool for measuring an earthquake, and it's called a seismometer, seismeter. and it measures the intensity at the epicentre, so kind of the centre of the earthquake. It measures how strong it is. So as I said, we get some in the UK which would be so small that they would barely register and we wouldn't feel them. And then you get some that are so big that they cause mass destruction. The scale which earthquakes are measured on is called the Richter scale. So a really tiny rating on the Richter scale would mean that it's not a very big earthquake, you probably didn't feel it, and a high rating on the Richter scale would mean that it's a massive earthquake. Let's have a look at what to do then. As I said a moment ago, people living in the area where earthquakes commonly occur would need to be prepared, and they would have a safety kit, maybe something like this, maybe in their offices or in their cars. So you'd need plenty of water, flashlights, emergency whistles, extra shoes and clothes, a first aid kit and a battery operated radio. So those things are suggesting that you could end up getting hurt. You could end up getting trapped somewhere and you could end up um, needing to attract attention. You've got lights and whistles and a radio. Now, if you were caught in a big earthquake, this is the instructions on what you should do. So first of all, drop, cover and hold. 
So you should duck under a strong table or desk, cover your head and neck with your arms like this, and stay away from the windows. So let's think why you should get underneath something strong and sturdy and why you should stay away from windows. So I'm thinking that in an earthquake, when everything is going to shake and move like this, windows are probably going to shatter. And if you were led down underneath the window, all the glass is going to fall on top of you. So you want to get under something nice and strong so that if things do start falling or collapsing, you've got the best chance of being protected. It's going to be important to stay calm and make safe choices and not panic and stay where you are. So if you were in the middle of an earthquake, you should try to stay where you are, not run out of your building, because if you're running through when the earthquake's happening, you're likely to be in more danger. So you need to shelter and find something to hide underneath um, until the shaking stops. So hopefully you never find yourself in an earthquake. But if you do, now you know exactly what to do. Let's take a look at another natural disaster. Now, tsunamis. Um, Tsunami has always got a very strange spelling, and so we say it's tsunami, but it starts with a T and followed by an S. So try to remember your um, spelling of that when you are writing about them. Now, these are linked to earthquakes because they are actually caused by er an earthquake happening under the water, under the ocean. So this picture here shows that you've got your fault line. Remember, the fault lines are the edges of the tectonic plates. You've got an earthquake happening here with its epicenter, the middle of it happening there. And the effect on the ocean is that the water is pushed up, it's displaced, and it causes a massive, massive wave. It can also be caused by an underwater volcano or an underwater landslide. So the land moving underneath or a volcano erupting under the water. Now, the earthquake will move part of the ocean floor essentially as you can see here so the plates are coming together one's slightly going up um up above the other one and so that's causing the water above it to rise and you're going to get enormous enormous waves if you've ever seen a video of a tsunami in place the waves are huge and when they reach the shore they are going to cause absolute devastation and massive massive damage so normal wind travels at 90 kilometers an hour, but a tsunami can travel at 970 kilometers an hour. So they are incredibly fast and incredibly strong. Sometimes before the tsunami hits, there's a huge vacuum effect which sucks the water from harbors and beaches. So people can actually see the ocean floor with the fish and the animals there and all the water sucked away and then a few moments later a massive wave comes onto shore and then another one and then another one and this can happen for two hours or more and sometimes there might be an hour between waves so you might have a big massive wave think that it's gone and then another one comes it says here a tsunami can drag a boat from the sea and leave it high and dry okay so the force of it is enormous and here's a picture to show the devastation this was a normal town before a tsunami hit and this was the town after the tsunami hit so you can see all of this is completely underwater and all of this is destroyed the force of the water is just going to basically knock things down and cover things okay so what you should do if you're in a tsunami. So again, in coastal places or where tsunamis do happen, so it would need to be by, this, by the sea, coastal, and it would need to be probably in a common earthquake area. People have warning systems, and when they know, when they know that an earthquake has occurred that may lead to a tsunami, they warn people to get out of the way. Now you're instructed to find high ground, so you're instructed to get high, but Try not to climb a tree because actually the force of the wave would knock the tree down. So you need to go for high land or up a tall building. Now, if you are stuck in the water, you don't want to try and swim because the force of the water is going to be too much. So you need to try to find an object to grab onto and float along with it. OK, and if you're actually in a boat at sea, it sounds a bit strange, but the best thing to do would be head into the deeper waters don't head back to the harbour because that's where either water's getting sucked away or there's big massive waves and your boat is going to get taken with that. So again, 
don't think you'll ever find yourself in a tsunami. But this is the instructions of what to do if you did. Let's look at our last type of natural disasters before I set you off on your task. So tropical cyclones or tropical storms. Now cyclones are huge, rotating, spinning tropical storms. Okay, here's a kind of a bird's eye weather image of a tropical storm. And here is a kind of cross section that shows how it swirls around. It's caused by weather, so low pressure weather systems and swirling really, really fast um, winds. And it looks like a big funnel like this. OK, the middle of the storm is called the eye and that is where it is calm and it is still. And so if you're in the middle of a storm and it goes calm and still, you know you're right in the middle of it. And when cyclones hit the land, the rain that it brings and the wind that it brings can cause massive damage to the buildings, the roads and the trees. Now, cyclones have different names depending on where they occur in the world. So um, if they occur in this East Asia area, they call them typhoons. Here they call them cyclones and here they call them hurricanes over in the Atlantic Ocean. Now you can see this is where your cyclones and tropical storms generally occur, okay, near the equator where it is hotter. They're usually happening in the hot summer months, okay. So evaporation, so evaporation is means water evaporating, it builds up clouds. The wind forces the air upwards and it flows back and the humid air makes more clouds and the winds outside of the cyclone steer the storm to make it grow. OK, so it needs that hotness, it needs that heat to actually create the cyclone. Now, how should you stay safe in a cyclone? Stay away from low lying and flood prone areas. So there's going to be some water coming with it, probably some waves. So you don't want to um, be anywhere that's going to flood. Board up your windows to try to keep your home safe. If your home's on low ground, go to a shelter. Stay indoors because the strong winds will blow things around. Leave If you live in a mobile home, leave that and get to a shelter. And if you're told to evacuate, evacuate immediately. So they're going to cause lots and lots of damage. These storms will be able to pick up cars and trees and cause a lot of chaos. So you need to stay safely in your houses and try to board it up. OK, your task for today then is to create a leaflet or an information poster on how to survive a natural disaster. So you can pick one of these things to focus on. Um, I've looked at three today. Last week we looked at volcanoes and volcanic eruptions count as a natural disaster. Or you could choose to research your own like avalanches or wildfires or flooding. What you need to write then is what is it, how does it happen, what damage it can do, how you could prepare for it and what to do if you get caught up in it. So it's going to be like an information poster or leaflet. You can do it on paper or you can do it on the computer. Be as creative as you like and try to get your information across. We would love to see what you come up with. Thank you for joining the lesson.